those less able to become adapted tend to die off. In the military, survival is defined as the ability to live in the field with limited equipment. But whatever the definition, survival is a matter of life over death. This is Fieldcraft for Idiots and Airsofters as well. Uh, this is inspired by the YouTube channel Echo Mike. Um, I, he, you know, he made an emphasis on passing the word on to other people like me and some of y'all that are going to be watching this video here. I don't really know how many of y'all will be watching this video, but I'm making it to spread information around because I think this is important information to know. Um, and we are going to literally start step by step with kind of like an overview of my kit over the course of a few videos. But also at the same time, it's like overview of certain important things. There's uh, three different types of kit you have. Survive, fight, thrive. At the start of the series, we're going to be going through survive. Water is very important. You cannot survive three days without it. And if you're not caring enough in any situation, even in just regular life, you're, you're kind of screwing yourself over. You know, if you ever wonder why you felt crap randomly one day, it's probably because you're not drinking water. And I'm being for real with that. Like, I've made the same mistake many times as well. So, like I said earlier, training and discipline is very important too. Like, if you can't, you know, drink water while you're at the office or while you're at work, then you're not going to be able to when you're doing a Milsim event or when shit hits a fan or when you're just doing something longer or you're just training. So... Just keep that in mind, training discipline is very important. That's something I'm still working on personally. And that's something that we all can work For on to survive. And which the focus on this video will be water. We're gonna do the on the body. So not the Smurfs kit I have on, not the ruck, but what I have on my initial uniform. So in terms of water, what do I have on my body? Well, when it's on your body, obviously it should be small. It should fit your pockets. And it should be a situation where, hey, this is stuff that's always on me in case this happens or that happens. Everything in your kit should have multiple purposes unless it's something specialized. So keep that in mind. In terms of water, there isn't really a crazy amount that I could carry on my body, right? But if I back up a few steps here, in this pocket on my leg right here, I have a life straw. Just your typical life straw, nothing more to it. Um, it's still in its original packaging. Um, and I know it's something that I could just unwrap and it's gonna work immediately if I need water. You know, there's a creek right behind me here and it's mostly dry, but there's some puddles there. I know I could get that life straw into that puddle if I really need it in a situation. But also in this pocket up here, I have a little boo-boo kit. Inside this boo-boo kit is also a couple water purification tablets. Like I said, if I have to run off without my kit, I should have at least some means of being able to survive for at least the first couple days to, you know, get back to my kit, regroup with my, uh, with my unit or whatever it is. So I'm not totally like shit out of luck if that were to happen. Now we are on to the low bearing equipment, the LPVs, the uh, plate carriers, stuff like that. I apologize for the wind, by the way. I don't think it's too bad, but I apologize for it. So, what to keep in mind is that this will probably be your main way of handling a lot of things because you never know if you need to drop a rock or if you're out on a patrol or something. Anywhere in between that, I like my initial carrying kit to be very capable, right? And there's still upgrades coming to it too, like I'm getting better magazine pouches soon, et cetera, et cetera. But, that was super random, but water is the most important thing. So on this kit right here, I have one water bottle carrier that is carrying a one of those big and now duct taped up 1.5 liter um, smart water bottles. Duct taped up to protect it. I spray painted it too, you know, so it's a little bit less um, obvious and that type of stuff. Pretty simple, like. 1.5 liters of water. It's really good to have on that initial kit and pretty simple. Now, so in the next part here, inside my bug pack here, I have my hygiene bag. Um, this I will go over in a different video later, but inside my hygiene bag is a liquid IV. You know, electrolyte replenishment is very important on the field. 
no matter what you're doing, you should always have some means of electrolytes. Even right now in the smart water bottle, I have a liquid IV packet dumped into here, you know, stuff like that. Just be sure when you're doing it, pick it, make sure you're only doing it in one singular, you know, canteen or water bottle or uh, platypus bladder, which that's a hydration pack, that type of stuff. I do it here because it's disposable and it won't be that big of a deal. So just keep that in mind. Up next, in up next in terms of hydration, I have the Ziploc baggie right here. And it has a pretty simple, pretty rudimentary platypus water purification thing. Twist this, you fill this up with the dirty water. You twist this on and you have the option of squeezing it into whatever you're drinking water out of or just straight up drinking it from this sippy straw right here. So coming around next, in terms of my low bearing equipment, in my IFAC right here. You know, zip this open. It's got basic stuff. I have two liquid IV packets inside here. I consider water to be just as medical as medical supplies are. So having extra electrolytes is very important. You know, you never know if somebody, especially if someone gets dehydrated, you can add this water that into their water and it makes it better literally better and it allows them to get hydrated and replenish more quickly especially on the field um up next we have the pack we have the ruck in which i will just go over that fairly simple on the next one so in terms of the rucksack for water this is one of the more thriving it comes in but it's still very important to carry a good amount of water in your backpack or your rucksack or whatever you're using. I don't know what brand this rucksack is, but it's worked pretty well for me so far. So I have a three liter bladder. I'm carrying four and a half liters of water today. Nothing too crazy. I'm also not doing a crazy training hike, but I'm still over prepared, right? Inside, and this is where I think it's very important, that you have enough room in your bag or your ruck to grab extra supplies, carry extra water, etc, etc. That's very important. Really not much more to it other than I carry a water bladder. Just make sure when you're loading your ruck that the weight is more towards the back. So back right here and towards the top. The water is all along the back right here for me and I have extra water on top right here. Pretty simple. There's really not much more to it because Majority of what I have is carried on here in case I need to abandon my rock for any reason And that's it for the video y'all um Please keep in mind um, That these videos for the field craft for idiots is a guideline It's not the exact rules. I'm just taking the knowledge that I have acquired and spreading it It is all up to you ultimately it is up to you to train. It is up to you to be disciplined in life in order to be a well-prepared citizen or even just be good at what you do. So please keep that in mind as otherwise you're just gonna end up copying and you're not gonna like it. Everything is up to you. Also, if you got any recommendations, leave it in the comments. If you wanna call me a loot drop, leave me in the comments. Um, other than that, train, stay as disciplined as possible. Something that I'm still working on as I'm just a 22 year old guy. Nothing else more to me. I'm not that special. And yeah, that's it. See y'all later.